Good afternoon, everybody. It's Lynn, the Leather Bag Lady. How are you all today? It's uh, January 3rd, uh, just afternoon, a few minutes past uh, midday. So hopefully you all had a great new year, a safe new year. I made the most of what was open, what was available. I must say I was very disappointed uh, New Year's Eve that I was not able to find any. Maybe I wasn't looking hard enough, I'm not sure, but... <coughs> I googled um, <clears throat> midnight 2021 or 2022, whatever, to try and find some kind of countdown for Canada. And <clears throat> I couldn't find anything. There was a few YouTubers that were out uh, doing their own live streaming in Toronto um, and such, but nothing officially. There was... Um, I think the UK had something, obviously in Times Square they had something. I don't know, why can't, you know, even in a closed uh, studio, like do something. But anyway, it came and it went and um, yeah, it was okay. Went to the movies yesterday, saw um, American Underdog, which is kind of a Rudy type, you know, uh, American rules football story young man you know tried really hard that kind of thing the story was excellent the story I'm not sure about the actors I, I felt the lead actor was just too old he looked a lot older like they were trying to pass him off as a college student and he did not <clears throat> I don't know maybe he wasn't maybe I read the story wrong but he was still playing for a college team but did not look young enough to be a college student. Now, apparently the actor looked very similar in aesthetics to, I think Kurt Warner is the, uh, the subject of the movie. And Anna Paquin, I, I don't know. I didn't think she was right either. Anyway, it was, it was a good movie though. I, maybe on a cheap night or whatever, I would go and see it for sure. There was three other people in the movie theater. So, nah, it was something different to do. Not something I would normally decide to do, but uh, the weather wasn't as bad yesterday as it was supposed to be. Leather Bag Lady Weather Report. It is an absolutely gorgeous day today. It is, the sky is as blue as blue can be, and, but it's cold. It's like minus 15 out there. So, I got to go to the post office, but I won't be doing much more than that, I don't think. I was going to go to the storage unit, but maybe not today either. So anyway, let's get to the bag. Save the chit chat for after. Now, <clears throat> today's bag is um, Vintage Fossil. Now, I don't come across Vintage Fossil very often, and I certainly don't come across um, larger sized Vintage Fossil. So... This is today's bag. It's, it's a beautiful bag. It's a natural leather. But with that natural leather, it has a very, very um, strong ability to get marked up. And it is, there are, the back side is actually excellent. And there's your, your fossil kind of uh, plate back there. On the front, there is, you can't even really see it on the screen, but there's a little bit of, uh, you know, just some, a few little areas where it's darkening. The straps, the same thing, you know, just in the touch zone, which with this natural leather, it's going to happen. And the same on the inside here. The interior is fantastic. You've got slip pocket, slip pocket, divider with a zipper and another uh, area. Here is your Creed. And this one actually does have a serial number on it. Now the newer ones don't have serial numbers on them. So I don't know, it's kind of cool. There's no outside pockets on the back but you do have a zipper compartment and a Velcro. And this I'm sure was probably for um, a phone, late 90s, I would say, or maybe early 2000s, but your sunglasses or your readers will fit in there beautifully. So it's not a waste of time. It had no hang tag, but I added a hang tag. It matches perfectly, silver hardware, the uh, leather is a perfect match. 
I just, you know, it's a great shoulder bag. Like I said, it's bigger in size. The worst area of wear is just this little patch right here on the bottom gusset. So that probably more wear than I would normally present to you, but it's fossil. There's a little, a little bit there too. It's fossil and this vintage fossil, much like Coach, much like Roots, much like, very much like Danier. I'll take vintage over the new crap any old day. And you don't find them with the, uh, you don't find them with the interior compartments anymore. Not very often anyway. So I gave my sister via my dad a beautiful vintage Danier bag. I knew she'd love it. And she did. She was like, I knew, I knew it was from you. <laughs> she um, had a similar bag. I don't know if it was Danier or if it was Timberland, but it was a beautiful kind of, you know, one of the uh, rectangular messenger that has the flap and it got stolen at Mohawk College years and years ago now. But I saw this bag. It was black, new buck front. I think I showed you new buck uh, front and back and pebbled leather on the sides. It was a gorgeous bag. She loved it. So I know my bags, people. I know my bags. So, like I said, that's today's bag, Vintage Fossil. It's a beauty. The leather is gorgeous, but there are some areas of, um, of wear. And obviously, the bag has been priced accordingly. So, um, there you go. Oh, this even, is that the same serial number on the outside? 75082. 750, yeah. So it even has the uh, serial number right here. Ah, it's kind of cool. Like I said, not very educated on vintage fossil because I don't come across them very often. So there you go. So history piece today. We're kind of still, you know, 19th century, eight, finishing up 18th century. It's still kind of all over the place a little bit. Um, I've got two different... Um, notes that I'm drawing from so that's kind of I'm trying to match them up but I'm not doing too good uh, a job oh give me two seconds two seconds two seconds because I've got an example I always try to give you an example of what it is I'm talking about and I do have an example of what I'm going to talk about now which is the 70s and the man bag, the MERS. Um, European men were very, very, very happy to walk around with a man bag. And um, probably, I would say 2010 plus have had a real revival. And I know that because I've had people asking me um, for um, a more masculine type side bags as opposed to the original uh, Merces, which is what I'm going to show you right now. So this is very reminiscent of an original man bag. Now this one I love because it's textured and it's um, a two-tone. It does have a little lock here. I wouldn't know how you would go about uh, finding out what the combination is. You pull the, there is a lot of wear on this uh, gold tone hardware, brushed brass or whatever. But look at that raw leather. The little marks here are from the studs here. And when you open it up, look at all that. I don't even think this has been used look at the credit card slots like that you can't even tell that they're there so in my opinion this is brand new i don't even see a made in oh there's pockets everywhere pocket pocket slip pocket and then so this is just my example of um a merce so that was um in the 70s these were all the rage all the rage in Europe and um, fag bags or whatever you want to call them 
which uh, certainly not how I would uh, would refer to it, but uh, which is probably not very politically correct. But um, you hear, I hear that a lot. Oh, hang on a minute. The, oh, there's a little there's a little screw missing here. Okay, see that on the strap. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, get that fixed up. But anyway, this is just an example of a Merce, which is kind of what we're talking about in the 70s. Um, and now a big demand, but they're more crossbody kind of messenger style bags. Um, European houses, couture houses, long, long, long history. Um, Tiffany and Co, that kind of thing. And then we come to Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Balenciaga, uh, Balmain, like some of those, uh, YSL, Yves Saint Laurent. They kind of were the new, the newbies of that era or of the designer brand era. Um, what else am I going to tell you? Oh, what I did want to tell you was... Um, Women wore, I don't know, maybe did I mention this to you before? In Canada, there is a magazine called Chatelaine. And um, I'm looking at, I was reading through this stuff. And Chatelaine is the name of a belt that women used to wear in the early 19th century. And it was a decorative belt. And it had all kinds of little loops on it that you could attach stuff to. So, um... Women wore chatelaines, decorative belt that hung things like bags from chairs. That doesn't make sense. Anyway, whatever. I'm going to have a look at it. I'm going to look it up on uh, Google. I probably should have done that beforehand. But And then they're just talking about railroad travel. And we've talked about that briefly, how that created a need for luggage, a need for something to put your stuff in other than a carpet bag, which... From a socioeconomic standpoint, um, was not um, affluent enough for the gentry. Um, I don't know if any of you are history buffs. I love history, European history especially. And it's really no different now. You want, that's why I hung the fossil hang tag on the vintage bag. I'm sorry, makes me, I don't know, maybe makes me fickle or uh, I don't know. I like. I like to know what my bag is. It doesn't need to scream it from the mountaintops. And, and I have beautiful bags that have no designer brand on them at all. But if I have one that does, why not? It's part of life. It's been part of history as long as we can remember. Status, um, symbols. I mean, let's face it. My little world, that's probably the only status I've got is my purse. And even then. They're all hand, they're all second hand, which is the whole reason I got into thrifting in the first place. I have tastes that my budget cannot sustain. But if I buy it second hand, not only have I discovered over the years that the quality is amazing, but you're gonna get a better bag for the same money as you would go and buy something at winners or whatever and to me i live my whole life that way almost everything in my home is thrifted and why not i'd rather spend three hundred dollars on a three thousand dollar couch than go to the brick and spend 8.99 and it lasts me two years because it's crap and falling apart i think that's kind of, well i don't know it's just my philosophy you like my new sweatshirt i don't know what this writing is looks like Russian and Chinese and whatever but I love it it's got all these little patches on it it's huge it's way too big for me but I don't care this was one of my Christmas gifts um and on the tag it's from 2016 so the outlet the Adidas outlet on Lundy's Lane in Niagara Falls has some of the most amazing Adidas collabs like designer brand collaborations they had the most gorgeous velour track pants but had a ruffle skirt around the top oh my goodness me I wished 
my daughter would have wore something like that because Miss Sarah would have looked amazing. Not really her style, I don't think. And I mean, I would have looked like a freaking toffee apple if I'd worn something like that. <laughs> but that's um, some of these sports stores, um, you know, the kind of uh, outlet stores. You never know like this. This is this was a very expensive sweatshirt back in the day. Um, and I mean, I think we got it for 20 bucks. So it's, um, so like I said, either thrifted or factory outlet, or I don't pay full price for nothing. Can't, can't be doing that. Can't be doing that. Anyway, everybody, we're 15 minutes in way too long. So, um, new year back on track with everything. I'm going to hopefully, I thought I was going to get to go to the falls this week, but I don't think it's going to be this week. I'll leave it till next week unless we get shut down again, which mm, we might be on our way. I think it was over 18,000 cases on New Year's Day, New Year's Eve. Anyway, you can hear my washing machine starting to go again. So um, I'll leave you with that. Have a great rest of the day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.